Today we'll be diving into the implementation of the mana system for our game. We'll focus on the two crucial aspects, managing the player's mana when they use different abilities, and setting up the regeneration system to replenish their mana over time. With that being said, let's dive right into the video. In our scene, we'll start by heading over to the 2D canvas, and our first step is to duplicate the 2D health slider, and then rename it to 2D mana. Afterwards, we'll adjust the colors to match the mana theme. For example, I'll be choosing this shade of blue. Now let's do the same thing for the 3D health bar by copying and pasting it to create the 3D mana slider. Ensure to set it to the same color as the 2D one to maintain a clean layout. I'll realign both the health and mana slider to make it look even and visually appealing for the game. Feel free to customize these settings to suit your game style. Once you've completed that, head over to your player and we'll create a new script. We'll call this mana system. Open it in Visual Studio and the first thing we're going to do is add the using Unity engine.ui. The variables we'll need for this are public float called max mana, which is set to 100, a starting mana variable, which is also set to 100, a public float named mana regenerate, which we'll set to 5 for now. We'll need the public sliders for both the 2D and 3D mana bars, a public text element called mana text 2D, and lastly, create a private float called current mana. In the start method, set the current mana equal to the starting mana, and call a void named update mana UI. Next, let's create the update mana UI method. We'll check if the mana bar 2D sliders is not null, and if it's valid, we'll set the value to current mana divided by max mana. We'll follow the same process for the 3D bar. Additionally, we'll check if the mana text 2D is not null, and if it's valid, we'll set the text to display the current mana rounded to the nearest integer, followed by a forward slash and then the max mana. In the update method, we'll call another void named regenerate mana. We'll create this method outside of the update method and inside the regenerate mana. We'll simply write an if statement checking if the current mana is less than the max mana. And if that's true, we'll add the mana regenerate multiplied times the delta time to current mana. To ensure that the mana stays within the range of zero to the max mana, we'll clamp the current mana between those values. And lastly, we'll call the update mana UI again to keep the UI sync. Add a public bool called can affordability, which will store a float called ability cost. And all we'll do here is return the current mana if it is greater than or equal to the ability cost. We'll then create another public void called usability, which will also store a float named ability cost. In here, have the current mana minus equals the ability cost, as well as clamping the current mana to current mana, zero, and max mana. That is all that is needed for this script. Now we'll go ahead and update the ability script and apply these methods. Now let's head to the ability script. For each ability, we'll create a float variable to represent its mana cost. For example, we'll have ability one mana cost set to 30. We'll then repeat this process for the other two abilities. Next, we need to add a public reference to the mana system we just created. And in the start method, we'll assign the mana system we're using into a get component mana system. Scrolling down to the private void ability cooldown, we're gonna rewrite this code. First, let's remove the ref float and replace it with a float named ability cooldown. Additionally, let's add another float called ability mana cost to store the respective ability mana cost. We'll remove this previous code and replace it later with an updated version. Now let's head back to the top and ensure that our variables for the ability cooldown method are correct. We'll have ability one cooldown followed by ability one mana cost, and then the two ref floats, and is ability one cooldown. Additionally, we can have the ability image one and ability text one to complete the setup. We'll then repeat this process for the other two abilities. Let's continue with the ability cooldown method. We'll begin with an if statement to check if the cooldown is true. Inside, we'll deduct the time to delta time from the current cooldown. Now let's add three more if statements. The first one will check if the current cooldown is less than or equal to zero, and if so, we'll set the is cooldown to false and reset the current cooldown to zero. For the second statement, we'll verify if the skill image is not null, and if it isn't, we'll set the color to gray and the fill amount to one. Lastly, we'll check if the skill text is not null. We'll set its text to ceiling value of the current cooldown converted to a string. We'll add an else statement checking if the ability's mana cost is affordable. We'll proceed with the following instructions. Check if the skill image is not null and set it to color gray, while also setting the fill amount to zero. 
For the skill text, we'll set it to an empty string with a space and closing quotations. If the ability mana cost is too high, we'll enter the else statement and perform these actions. Check if the skill image is not null and setting it to color red while also setting the fill amount to 1. We'll then set the skill text to X in quotations if the skill text is not null. Now scrolling back into our ability inputs, where we check if we press the key down, also check if we can afford the ability with the ability 1 mana cost. And down when we press the left mouse button, we'll check again if we can afford the ability and copy and paste the rest of the code in here. We'll then also add the usability function in the mana system script and store the respected ability cost. We'll now repeat the process for the two other abilities, checking if we can afford the mana when pressing the key down and right when we press the left mouse button, as well as minusing the mana when the ability is pressed. Back in Unity, we'll go to our 2D canvas and down at the blue bar fill, create a text which will represent our mana value, adjust it to suit your game. We'll then add the sliders text in our mana system script and then attaching the mana system script to our ability script. One thing I forgot to mention is to make sure that the 2D mana text you created is outside of the blue fill image. Also make sure that it's directly underneath the 2D mana slider game object, just like what you see here. Press play and you can see that it's working completely fine. When there's not enough mana, the icon will turn red and will have an X on it to indicate that you can't use the ability yet. This is working fine, but there is the initial cooldown timer we had in the previous videos. To get this look, go back to the ability script and down where it says if is cooldown, instead of setting the skill image to fill amount 1, have it equal to the current cooldown divided by the ability cooldown. Now when we press play, it will show the proper cooldown timer for the image while also showing if the player doesn't have enough mana to cast the abilities. That is all for this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!